This project started with just an idea a year ago, a boat that could autonomously scout the waters. It needed to be reliable, adaptable, and above all else, completely over-engineered. It started small and simple, and slowly became what it is today. In the last video, we upgraded the range on both our radio system and our depth mapper. Today, we're gonna to send the boat out on its most dangerous mission in by far the worst weather conditions yet. So this is what we're using on the boat. It's small, compact, and very impressive for its size, but the only problem with it is range. Depth-wise, this Fish Deeper Pro Plus can see right down to 80 meters, but it only has 100 meters of range. For our project, 100 meters just isn't enough. And it's not really its fault. It's just because it's got a very small Wi-Fi antenna on the top of it. There are multiple options we can pick to extend the range. Now, Fish Deeper offer their own solution, which is to have a phone on the shore alongside their own Wi-Fi extender. Now, this will increase the range to up to 200 meters. It is quite expensive for what I thought was just a Wi-Fi extender. My idea was to create my own Wi-Fi extender for the fish deeper. This would still have the fish finder on the boat and the phone on the shore. But what we'd add in between was a separate Wi-Fi extender. The biggest difference between this router and Deeper's own is that the Deeper extender connects directly through. It has no interference with the connection throughout. Whereas this router isn't capable of creating this type of passive connection. So at 7 p.m. the night before test day, when I had exhausted all of my options with the emulators on my laptop, I thought this might be the most straightforward option, but I knew it would work. This would be to still have the deeper on the boat. We would still have my phone on the shore to have another phone in between my phone and the fish deeper that would stay with the boat. I ordered the cheapest phone and a prepaid SIM card to Argos we went there at 7 p.m. and I picked up my burner phone, which really did look bad. And to make matters worse, I turned to my girlfriend and I said, don't worry, it will end up in the middle of a lake tomorrow. We can run the Fish Finder app in the phone on the boat. This enables us to do local logging. This is where things get a little bit more interesting. And whilst we might not have 4G everywhere, we are now able to completely control our local phone. This works even if it's locked. Once we accept control on the local phone, we then have full access to the entire display. This allows us to connect to our Fish Finder app with reasonably low latency and monitor the depth at any point in time. So whilst I really wanted to do something complicated, this definitely did seem like the most sensible and reliable option. There was a great suggestion in the comments. We've added basic navigation lights to help show which direction the boat is facing. These may be improved in future updates, but for now they should make orientation much clearer. We've switched back to bi-blade propellers. They're much nicer on the ears compared to the tri-bladed propellers. The sound is a lot less harsh and feels a bit better overall. We are at the lake and the weather is horrendous. We've got rain warnings. I think we're just gonna send the boat out and hope that it survives on its longest journey it's ever done to the middle of the lake, really. 
Um, we'll have to see how it goes. We started by laying out a mission in Ardu Pilot, more than twice as long as any previous journey. It would take the boat further into the centre of the lake, where we assumed would be more exposed to wind and waves. What we didn't think about at the time was the direction of the wind from the launch. This time, we actually remembered to set it to return to launch after the mission had completed. That was if it would get that far in the mission. Because of the length of the journey, we also changed the speed to 1.2 meters per second, which was over double from the 0.5 that we had used in all previous missions. We also ensured our Moxon antenna on the RC controller was actually pointed in the correct direction, as helpfully mentioned by someone in the comments. At this stage, I was still very confident in the boat, and we hadn't had any stability issues in the past with the new hulls. We were left to sit and wait as we watched the Ardu pilot ground control, keeping a close eye on the angle of the boat in the water. This would be an ideal indicator on how it is reacting to any rough water. As the boat pushes closer to its furthest waypoint, we start to notice it drawing a little bit more current to maintain speed. The heading becomes a little bit more erratic, nothing major, but just enough to think about. And that's when we started thinking. We're still moving with the wind and the waves, and if anything, they're potentially still helping us. But what happens when the boat actually gets to the last waypoint and has to turn around and fight them? A quiet concern starts to build, where internally I start to add up the cost of all the components in the boat. We reach our furthest point, a moment to reflect on the achievement. The boat has made it this far while maintaining an average signal strength of over 95%, around a kilometre away, over water, in the rain. Our battery sits at 15.9 volts, giving us roughly 68% charge to get home. But as the boat turns and begins the return leg, things change quickly we start to see current spikes and sudden drops in speed. Combined with the increasingly erratic heading, it becomes clear, the boat is fighting. The wind and waves that once helped us are now pushing back. We watch the mission planner helplessly, hoping each wave isn't the one that flips the boat. I believed it could handle these conditions, especially after the stability test in the last video, but the waves out in the middle of the lake were a different story. Unpredictable, choppy and relentless. It may not look like the waves are that big, but considering how large the boat is now, it puts in perspective just how much force each one carries, and it would only take one really big one to tip it. We also start to see the huge depths of lake beneath us, and it puts things into a slightly scary perspective. This DIY 3D printed boat is currently making its way across 30 meters of water below it. That's like saying that there's a 10 story building sitting right underneath the hull. Suddenly, it all feels a little bit more real, the situation that this boat is in. After passing the next waypoint, we start to see the boat regain control. Its heading stabilizes 
and the waves begin to ease slightly as her angle shifts away from the wind. For the first time in a while, things feel more manageable. At this point, we start to finally look forward to the boat being on its home stretch. It's worth mentioning at this stage, the battery information changes to red alongside the percentage that is calculated, but this is incorrect and must be due to the battery capacity setting I have not set up correctly. As we begin to leave the open water behind, the lake starts to feel calmer. The depth beneath us gradually shallows and the wind eases off. The water becomes noticeably more peaceful as the boat nears closer to home. For the first time on the return journey, we could actually see the boat again. At this point, I was honestly just wondering whether the DJI action camera was still holding on or whether we had lost our duct taped phone somewhere in the chaos. It wasn't exactly the most secure setup. The boat returned home in one piece with a mix of relief and quiet accomplishment. In that moment, I didn't think to take it out of auto. So of course, it carried on straight into a rock a fittingly clumsy end to an otherwise impressive journey. Once we returned home, we were able to then look back at the fish finder data and begin to understand the depths of the lake and see the distance between our waypoints. In another mission, I'll scan the sunken village under this lake to see if we can make out any outlines of buildings or ruins. If you've gotten this far, thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know if you want to see anything else in the comments and thank you for all the positive feedback that I've had so far.